do do do. Oh Jesus Christ, it's so hot. Oh shh 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 sh sh muting my stream. Yeah, technical technical difficulties it says because I don't I'm sorry if you can't read, but it says technical difficulties. Do you understand? The first thing I do in my stream is yell at viewers. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's not the most readable text. Let me transition it. Yeah, welcome. Welcome to the Google, the Google town, the Google net. Um, I might actually just check something first. Um, how's your day going? Okay, that's good. I can uh, I can use the internet, and no one from Twitch can find me, because because I need to keep the bath water to myself. Finished uploading Tox recodes. That's good. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is figure out what the hell all this shit is, because I don't remember it. I remember nothing. Um, what's in the to do file? This can be like, I might actually just upload this and I'll treat this as like a reintroduction. Um, what the hell does any of this mean? Okay, so obviously, uh, this is my stream and I am streaming. Oh shit, let me delete that. Okay, what's in T? Right, useless stuff. SSL IRC Yeah, huh? Did I do that? Right, so I have a patched version of Wireshark that does SSL stuff SSL chat that netcats to a local SSL server. Is that running? Let me just check How do you open a terminal? All right We're not going to be having music today because Wow, is that clipping? That was clipping. I don't want to clip. Okay, DOSBox. I remember vaguely that I have to do something in order to have DOSBox run properly. I'm offline according to Twitch. Well, not much I can do about that. I'm already hotboxing it in a room here. Ah, I've got some dolls. That's cool. Okay, so let me just delete that. So the first thing we're going to do is check that slurp's working. No, it is not working. Um, so we're just going to fix slurp real quick. And by fix it, I mean just I made it. I made it before. I made a version of it. Does this run on its own? Because I might just dump that in my dot local bin directory and see how that goes. So, um, let's just log in. Uh, log in real quick. Slurp. All right. Yeah, it. There's a bug because, wow, five zeros to exit. Um, there's a bug in Slurp where, hey, T sodding, dosh trash, oh shit, that's an emoji, I can't read that from my, from, I've like my stream up on three screens. Okay, yes, that's like a picture of someone with eyes and glasses. Okay, let me just log back out of this. Yeah, there's lots of trash here. Oh my god. Ubuntu, are you being trash? Don't do this, please. Just log out. Please don't do this. <laughs> it wanted me to update today. I signed into it and it's like, it's like, 
Bungie needs to update to 19.10, and it's like, I think I'm only on 8.10. No, not 8. 18.10. Okay, there we go. That was weird. Enter my secret password. Wow, that's shit. Look, you can't even tell it's focused. Like, I can click over here. Oh, okay, password. There we go. In we go. Ubuntu is the Windows of Distro's send tweet. What the fuck? A Linux distro bothering you with updates? Is that even a Linux distro? It's Ubuntu, and it gave me one little, like, you know, there's a new update available. And that's fine. That doesn't bother me at all. Okay, so let's run slurp. Let's get slurp started. And that's going to be what we use to connect DOSBox to the internet. Let's actually just... Am I being anti-Australian if I think you sound like Steve Irwin? Yes. Oh my god. Okay. You weren't there when Steve Irwin died. It was a... He, it was like... I think they like had it on TV. Like some... It was... Basically it was like... I suppose that it's the Australian version of Queen Diana being on TV, like her death, just having funeral stuff everywhere. Okay, let's check that we can connect to the internet. Let's just check my website. If I can type my website. Yeah, check it out. That's my website. I have one sick as. And this is in DOSBox. Um, so right away, I will just explain that the reason I'm using DOSBox is because i um, actually using FreeDOS, which I have around here somewhere. Um, is it in FreeDOS hacks? No, that's just an empty folder. That's normal. Just keep empty folders around your computer. Uh, it might be here, actually. Let's just run this in a terminal. Um, so, FreeDOS runs, but it has un the unfortunate problem that, yeah, I messed up, I messed up some of it, so, like, there's a ton of errors on boot up, so I actually have to remove it, but the issue is that I can't actually scale it up, like DOSBox here. And it just runs at 100% CPU. I don't want that. Does DOSBox have its own DOS implementation, or are they reusing something like FreeDOS? That is a good question, and the answer is yes. Yes, they are. They have their own implementation. So, their implementation of DOS is strange, and I've had multiple issues with it. And that's been a lot of fun to debug on previous streams, which I don't have uploaded. Um, which brings to the, my next part is networking. DOSBox just, it can't network. See this? This is a network. Let's, let's ping google.com. Yeah, that's, it's working great. Because QMU can't do pings. But let's, let's try curling it. Let's, let's try linksing it. Let's, what, what do I have? What do I have? I, how, links, links, please, please. <laughs> I have a web browser, I swear. Um, but yeah, QMU actually uses Slurp as its interface between the internet and whatever em network emulation thing it uses. Um, and I've actually brought out, yeah, it's also slow as hell. Get that out of here. I don't want that. Get out. Um, so I'm using Slurp with DOSBox too. And, uh, let me just pull up my Slurp scripts. That's my Slurp RC. Um, that's my Slurp stuff there. That allows me to... Yeah, I need to use SoCat to shim it so that DOSBox can open Slurp, I think. 
Yeah. And I have to use DOSBox X because there's like bugs that stop Whatcom from running in DOSBox normally. So I think I have my DOSBox configuration here. Oh, where is my DOSBox? Here we go. Um, let's see. So we have this. If you are interested, remember this. This is this is what you use to connect to Slurp. And uh, this this messed me up so much because if you look here, you need to have this transparent value. Otherwise, it's going to mess up. It'll mess up. It'll it won't work, and you'll be sad. And it tells you that here, but it doesn't tell you that you have to put it like one and not true or on or something. Okay, so let's let's get straight to the DOS. Wow, that did not work well. Can I make this full screen? Oh, that's right. I don't want to make it full screen. So, let's see what I have. Wow. Great. Okay, so we have our development tools. I've been using Open Whatcom 2 at the moment. Open Whatcom is fine. Um, are we writing DOS forth? I wish. That'll be next. Um, for the network stack, I've actually been using MTCP. But I've had to modify it um, to work without relocations. And that's just kind of hell. So I'll explain what's happened here. Um, this is a shit editor. Yeah, so I've had to fix up all the far calls to just add the current existing code field, uh, code segment, to the pointer. And I've had to do that in all interrupts, and I've had to do that whenever I'm doing a long call, like setting vectors for interrupts. And I've had to do this in, I think, yeah, I've done this in some places in MTCP2. All right, it's time. So let's go to my, that's right, I have to press F10 to exit. Does GCC not work or, or something, it says COS? Um, I want to make COM executables, and you can't take that away from me. And COM executables don't support relocation. And because it doesn't support relocation, when you're hard coding a far pointer in the executable, it's just not going to replace the zeros. So my solution to that has been to hard code in like a moving of the register. So I'll show you that in a second. Um, I think I've got Whatcom's tools here. Do I have Whatcom's disassembler? Yeah. So let's open up my COM executable. Oh, this is the debugger. But it has a disassembler in it. So it's the same thing, basically. And uh, it just kills. It kills me and... Oh my god, did it freeze? No, it's just doing nothing. It's 100% doing nothing. Why? Why, why? Okay, all right. Intuitive. So as you can see here, when I'm setting a vector, um, I have my DOS get vector thing here. And if I actually go and, let's see, code assembly. Um, uh, you can see here that when it goes to set the vector, I believe which one is it here? Yeah, I believe that um, by default this part here will be oops, this part here, this line um, three seven five. Uh, that will get relocated at runtime, but I can't do that with COM executables. So I've just shoved in, I've just clobbered the register here. So that's that's all the trash I've had to go through for now. 
All right, so let's go down to the bot. And we have the bot. I think. Bot one, bot two. Why do I have all these bots? V, let's just edit the make file. Just see what's up here. Oh yeah, I was really trying to get this into TCP socket objects. Yes, I had to take out Yeah, I had to take out DNS support to get to fix in fit in 64k with enough space left over for whatever I want to do. bot1.com bot2.exe so bot1 Let's just remove that for now. Oops. Now let's make that. And make. W make. Yeah, that's the right one. Um, and let's run it. And as you can see, it connects to my local IRC server. Wow. It's fantastic, and uh, if I spam the F button, it overflows because I barely have any actual buffers. So that's not what I want. Alt X to quit. Okay, and I think it hangs here. I'm not sure. So I guess today I'm just going to be writing up... Um, <laughs> shut down my dude. Yeah, you got that, my dude. Production quality JS software right there. Yeah. Um, so why do I have so much junk here? Oh, that's right. It's just compiling everything. And it all goes in a single directory. Because you got to have your error files and your obj files and your trace files. So what we're going to do is we're just going to um, fix up the bot code today. I'm only here for a little bit, so we might as well just clean this up a bit. Um, we're basing it on MTCP's code. Oops. And we're going to just delete a lot of this junk. Actually, I'm going to just save this as bot.cpd. Bot. Old.cpp, bot. does that work? Yeah, okay. So, junk this. Oh, this doesn't have visual mode, does it? Thanks. So... Ah, oh, that removes some headers, okay. So what aren't we using? Bump, turbo, C++, standard stack lengths. Is that used anywhere else? Can I jump? Not jump that, Jesus Christ. Um, am I using receive interface? Ah, that's defined somewhere else. Um, it advises me to turn it off, so I might actually just... Oh no, it's commented out there. Fine. I don't care. Um, it defines some stuff here. Function prototypes. Ah, uh, that's a lot of shit. Um, okay. Alright. So, the first thing I'm actually going to do is remove support for binary stuff. Because I don't have time for that. Or, mm, I should be using binary mode. Ah, uh, I'm not sure. Hang on. What the hell does... We're not going to be listening at all, ever. Um, so, uh, no, I don't want to exit. Listening. Uh, oh, so I removed the listening code. Um, so it picks a random port. Okay, fine. Um, that's always going to be zero, so we can just 
you gank that out. So let's go back and delete this junk here. I think. No, I didn't delete anything. Okay, STD in file. So here we have the bulk of the junk that we have to figure out. Uh, let's see, control C handler. Let's just set that to the control break handler. Control C handler, control break handler. And let's just make that. Um, let's see, file buffer. Okay, so if it fails to allocate the buffers, then we're kind of screwed anyway, so that's okay. We'll keep that error there. Because in DOS, if you error, you can't just like seg fault, because that kills the DOS. All right, so let's see. Um, let's just jump that up here. Um, I did actually convert this to use static buffers at some point, but I don't remember if that's still that way. Hey, click me, what's up? Old control break handler. I didn't set the old con old control C handler. Is that a bug? Old control. No. Okay. Well, this doesn't actually work. I don't think. If binary mode. Yes, I don't think the control break stuff is used at all. Your Vim looks very weird, Mr. Strimmer. This is open Whatcom's version of Vim. And uh, I just pressed something and that's deleted my desktop background. So, uh, what the heck. Um, yeah, so... I didn't know this existed, but apparently Open Whatcom has its own version of Vim. Vim deleted desktop, yeah. I'm not sure if I'm gonna... See you, click me. Yeah, Juke Chan. We have arrived. Okay, let's just remove this control break stuff, because that's never worked. I don't know if it's a DOS box thing, but control break just doesn't work. It's dead to me. So we're just going to ignore that. Just go away. What's this data buff? Alright, let's use for outgoing data. We've arrived where? Function pro I know what a function prototype is. Don't condescend me. Although, to be fair, it's actually probably for beginners. In that case, I feel dumb. Okay. This should probably like... Does that give a... I don't know. That seems like it should print something. Yeah, I'm just gonna put that failed to pass environment exiting. That seems fair, right? Exit negative one? Does DOS have negative return codes? That's cursed. I don't want that. Okay, wait after close. 
Why do we want that? Okay, so that's purely for STD in. So we're going to get rid of that. It could be that. It could be like all ones. Linux kernel uses negative codes. Okay, you got me. You got me. That's like a pet peeve I have as well. I wish that, you know, libc used negative codes instead of having the stupid Arano stuff. But yeah, uh, Linux does have negative codes, but not negative return values. I think you're only limited in returning 0 through 127. Okay. STD enclosed. Every time someone calls it STD in, I think sexually transmitted disease in. Yeah. That's like, when you start programming, you're like initially creeped out by a bunch of like the stuff. But then you're like, I guess this is how programming works. T. Soding says, what's funny is that libc wraps syscalls that return negative codes to functions that set error no lol. Yes, that is the funny part. And I, I just die inside. Just give me my syscalls, please. Let's remove STDN. Erno is a wart. You're a wart. Oh shit. I needed that. <laughs> I'm so lucky this Vim has multi level undo. Otherwise, I would be screwed. Okay. Yeah, C has a lot of really weird things in its standard library, and Arano is bizarre to me. Does this Vim work with current Vim extensions? It's not Vim, it's Whatcom's Vim. I just, it really creeps me out how, uh, how, how DOS programs just have a clock in it. Like, all of them have a clock at the top right, or left, or whatever. Just so that you can know what the time is, because while you're programming, your computer can't do anything else. Alright. So just break immediately. C is just really weird in general, because the center basically goes, any possible confusion, make it undefined behavior. Yeah, but to be fair, what else are you going to do? You're just going to... What? Okay. So this should compile. <laughs> and if reading interactively. So it actually reads keys and stuff. You're jelly of my viewer numbers? Wow, thanks. Can I pay for things using my viewer numbers? All right, error stop, you pressed control break. No. Why do I have an error stop variable? One. Okay. I'm getting like weird claustrophobia from this code just because I can't actually just read it. Like I, the terminal, it's too small. Okay, so let's just see if this compiles. Okay, so first of all, see all those integral values may be truncated? Some of those are okay. Um, but some of these aren't. So let's see. Error line one, two, two. Receive buff size has not been declared. All right, gotcha. Buff size. Read the size. Right for zero. 
receive buff size. So that doesn't do anything. All right, go on then. I mean, that seems like it should do something, but if it works, it works. Part of programming DOS is having all those warnings. Okay. Oh, it connected. Okay. Test. Okay, control C. Yep, and Alt X works. Is your trash bin called rubbish because of the locale? Interesting. Let me just check that out. Um. Python Visa says, you're right about the claustrophobia. Yeah. Yeah, um, hang on a second. Uh, what's my local? Is it Nautilus? No, it's Kaja. Hang on a second. Let's just, oh, it's Kaja. Uh, it's impossible to uh, start Kaja properly. I'm pretty sure it's due to my local, my locale. Um, because I'm in the Australian locale. Ian AU. Kaja? I'm just going to pronounce it Kaja. Can I actually start this without it backgrounding? No? God, Kaja's the worst application. No, I like interruptions. That's fine. Um, quit Kaja. Oh, it just respawns. I can't remember why that is. Is that a system D thing? I think so. Uh, Kaja. No, it's a session thing. Yeah, it really should be trash. Let me fix that. Okay, let's get back to this. Also, welcome Python Visa. Do you do Python work? Python's cool. That's a funny way to spell Juki is home. Well, Juki is home is already over here, and I can't put it in the trash. So, you get what you pay for, if that even matters. All right, shut down. What does shut down do? The main complexity <laughs> is real home. Yeah, all right. There we go. And if you hear me clicking my mouse button loud like this, that's just because my mouse button is kind of shit house and it just doesn't click sometimes. And so instead of fixing it, I now just hurt my finger pressing it and avoid using it. Okay, let's see. If to kind Whatcom. This is brutal but needed for Whatcom. I actually do have a gaming mouse. Um it's actually kind of interesting to bring up because I've been having so many USB issues the past few days. And I thought it was because my machine had like messed up capacitors somewhere. But I think it might actually just be a crap USB hub that I have. Um, because it's also kind of crapped out when I plug in the mouse and the mouse is sending like a thousand hertz USB stuff across it. Yeah, they're awful, but I only have two USB ports on this for my entire computer. And sometimes I want to plug in three things, so. All right, is this a special key? Where does it detect control C? Key car equals three. Why does it? Oh, 
He's just key card three. All right. So now I have to decide: Are we going to do this binary? And I think the reason for that. Set mode one. Zero one. Oh, so that's just STD in, STD out binary? Sure, whatever. Um, I'm actually going to regret this, but I feel like I'm just going to remove all the STD in, STD out stuff. Um, binary mode... We're just going to remove anything that relates to using this as an actual netcat. Wait after close. Didn't I remove that? Yeah, get out of there. Close on remote close. Yeah, generally you want to do that. Why not write from clean instead of ugly hacking like this? Well, because I don't know what I'm doing. Does that answer your question? I can explain in more detail, but I'm not sure. Start. DOS time T start. Uh, do I actually use start anywhere else? No, that's just dead. Max packet size. Who's max? <laughs> Double digit viewer numbers, you're so jelly. Yeah. Follow cause, he streams anime. Anime's good. It's like an anime game. Yeah, but people like the DOS programming because they don't have to do it. And I just submit to myself. I submit this to myself, this horror, this nightmare. Um because I've decided that this is the life I want. I want to be... This editor looks painful. Hello, Spectral Memories 2. You're correct. It is a little bit painful. It's it's Vim, but not Vim. Okay. Is key cached? No. Packet process single, drive up, drive packets, remote closed. Oh, that just hurts me so much. How it just jumps there, and I don't know where this is because I don't have line set numbers. Numbers. Does this have line numbers? Alt H, Control H. How do I? Okay, options settings. Alright, change like V, beat flag, auto indent, true, clock, color bar, current status, draw, tilts, 8 bits, escape message. I want lines. I want line numbers. Jumpy scroll, line numbers. What? Maybe I need to restart it? Oops. Um, file, save. File, save, file. Oh my god, okay. Okay, oh my god, what's happening? Okay, line numbers, please. Alright. That was fun while it lasted, I guess. I'll just use, I'll just use the scroll bar as my kind of dead reckoning here as to where I am in the file. You can see the line number on the bottom left corner. Oh my god, yes. Alright, I'll use that. Thank you. I don't know why I didn't see that. That's in normal VM. Um, I guess I'm just too used to enabling line numbers. Okay, end if reading from a file. Well, we're not reading from a file, so let's just... What? Did I just find the way to exit VIM? Control C when I'm running a command exits VM. Alright. Um, from the file. Okay.
and if reading interactively. Okay, so let's just F0 this. And if and let's go back reading interactively if S to the in file is file. Okay. Is std in file? Did I delete that? All right. No. Okay, let's try that. Please vote in your poll. Which poll? Did you start a poll that I didn't vote in? Was it your poll that had like the different games to play and it had like Dominion and something? I didn't vote in that one because it didn't have any good games. Or rather games that I knew. <laughs> I don't know any of the games that you had in that poll. What is a Dominion? Alright, checks in out. No, and then it had something about talent, telnet, new line. Okay, so we're just gonna always send the new line character. Maybe someone might vote, otherwise you're gonna YOLO something silly. Don't YOLO, never YOLO. Okay, yeah. That's a big chunk of code that I'm trying to remove there. Okay, nice, nice. Line Freddy. Okay. Okay. I hit this problem before. I don't understand it. But I've clearly ruined something. I removed one bracket too many. Yes, and if reading interactively. Okay, that seems like the right bracket. That seems like the right bracket. That seems fine, that seems fine. Okay, so why is that there? All right, so that's just off. What did I touch there last? This, right. Okay. Premature end of line 651, right output. What have I done? What did I do? Okay, did this mess something up? I'm not gonna lie, my, my ability to program at the moment is fairly impaired because the temperature is rising and I don't have my window open or fan on because I'm recording. So if I just pass out, just call Nobody, I guess. Call Twitch so they can kill the stream. And if reading from file. Alright, so that was the wrong. If I pass out from heat exhaustion, call Twitch so they can cut the stream. Um, and just let me die peacefully. This looks fine, but it's not. I'll go to a place with no software and no hardware. Oh, if only. Hell. Oh, 
Is that hell for you? Okay, this, this is not right, I don't think so. Oh, I'm so mad this chipped me up last time. Okay. What column is this? Column 5. Okay, and this is column 5. That should be fine. But evidently it's not. Okay. So, let's hit the wild one here. Yes, and that goes to that bracket. Those don't belong together. That's together. Checking keyboard input. That's fine. Outgoing packets. And if reading interactively. Plus the remaining socket. Okay, so I think this actually has to have a bracket here for the while. What's up? You have one vote. Sweet. What did they vote for? Dominion 5? What is Dominion's 5? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I kind of just do like being clueless about video games. Okay, if binary mode equals to zero. Alright, that's a problem. Just set body mode to zero. Um, I know you're sending me like a link, but I'm kind of busy streaming. Hang on, I can open it on my laptop. Wait a second. Wait, you streamed Dominion's Five? Oh, is it? It's that game. I think. Nope, I've never seen that game before. Um, cool. It looks like something... It looks like it has like an early 2000s UE. Telnet NL. Original Dominions was basic on Amiga. Alright, Telnet NL, let's just leave that there for now. Then port it to C on Linux. Alright, so does this still work? Oh my god, it does. I think... Does Alt-X work? I think so. I hope so. Alright. I don't know why that takes so long to quit, but I suppose it doesn't matter. Okay, let's find this this dead code. This doesn't have visual mode. Okay. Um, line 381. Does this have like an X mode? Nope. I don't even, I don't know if that's like the correct way to do it. I feel like I'm going to actually regret deleting this part. But I don't really care because I'm pretty sure it's just handling input from Astidian. Okay, there's shutdown, write output, 
Okay. If we handle writing to STD out. Oops. Write output. So that just writes it to the screen. Okay. Um, if it's binary mode, oh, there's no new line. Oh my god. It does. It doesn't, like, can I read into it? No. Um, that's useful. I don't know what I would use that for. This is called optimistic code here. Just set your return code to zero by default. Oh, WMate. Yeah, I'll do that next time. All right. If binary mode is one, or tell it, never mind, it's one. So let's just, let's just be nice to IRC, IRC, whatever, and assume that we're just doing binary. Uh, but is that gonna pause if I get an error? Oh, it should, okay. Uh, one. Okay, that seems fine. What happened to the first Jukia? Was he banned? The account doesn't exist. Really? It doesn't exist? When I signed up, it uh, told me that it was in use. And I was like, okay then. Um, so I suppose they died. If anyone wants to take the original jerky name, that's fine. Okay, so we're actually just going to print the binary stuff. Binary. Set it to binary mode. You know what? Nope. I'm just going to... I'm going to be... Should I set it to binary mode? What's binary mode going to do? I should actually research that. What does binary mode in DOS do? Uh, search that with DuckDuckGo. Why would I need to do that? Because I know in Linux or Unix, you can just write all the binary stuff you want to. Okay, binary mode, oops. This website seems legit. Windows cares about this distinction. Yeah, I mean, but why? If DOS cares about it, then that's probably why Windows cares about it. Something, something, new lines. I know that DOS uses um, certain new lines. It might be about control characters. Um, I know that you have to open it in binary mode possibly to output high characters. Oh, that's right. In C, you get text semantics according to the current local. So binary mode, it probably gets converted if it's text or something. Or maybe it buffers it based on new lines. Um, let's just search that up. Windows. Let's go to the big G. Windows binary mode. Output. STD out. Okay. Let's not go to the big G. Oh. Can I solve a capture? That'd be cool. I'm not a robot. It's no buses there. Okay. Text and binary file mode input output. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, MSDN, that's that's a pretty oak you don't like MSDN? This doesn't explain what the difference is though. Data files are usually processed in text mode. Okay, but what does that mean? Oh yeah, yeah, this doesn't explain X. Yeah, I'm kind of hitting that now. What is binary mode? Text in binary mode. Let's head to the premiere of Windows documentation here, Sigwin. Explain it to me like I use Linux. Okay, so new lines are translated. That's all. Great. Um, okay, let's just leave it with, let's force it to binary then. Because I don't want to do any translation. And it's adding a lot of code. Binary mode. Binary. Wait, did I just delete the binary mode stuff? Yeah, okay. Um, so let's just set binary mode to one first. Oops. And right quit that. Yeah, Windows' documentation isn't too great. What? Huh? Is this a DOSBox thing? Why is it breaking at new lines? Windows should be using carriage returns and line feeds, right? Okay, that's weird, um, but let's just assume binary mode, yep, uh, binary mode equals zero, nope, that's never going to be the case. Um, Key card that if binary mode is zero, convert to Unix new line. Um, I'll just always convert it there. Let's just hard code a little bit of this key handling. Um, Estate in closed. Where else do we? That's all the binary mode stuff. Last car was CR. That's not set anywhere. Okay, let's try that. I'll be going in like 30 minutes. I got to, uh, I got a jet, as they say. Okay, that seems to work. We're getting there. <laughs> I got a jet. Oh, there's so much smoke outside. Jesus Christ, why is there so much smoke outside? Yeah, like Scott Morrison, I got a jet. I got to get to Hawaii. I don't want to be in this shit, huh? So if I actually comment these out, will that cause it to break? No. No, I don't want that. I don't get why control C someone's ripping their fat vape outside. <laughs> oh my god. I would want to know who's vaping this much that it's just smoking up my entire town. Uh, if you don't have context, then 
Australia is in some trouble with fires at the moment. Um, so there's a lot of smoke. Yeah, it, it's bad, but what can you do? I mean, our Prime Minister's at Hawaii at the moment, so he's doing everything he can. Spending time with his family in Hawaii. It's not great. You'd think at this point they'd be like, maybe we should stop polluting. Let's just, let's just stop now, just in case. Okay, let's remove this big block of text. If right, so let's just return negative one there. I'm in Siberia right now and everything's just covered with snow here, but we did have some problems with forest fires during the summer. Yeah, uh, I think California, oh my God. Listen, I'm not good with geography, but California is not in Siberia, right? That's a different country. Yeah, because I'm just thinking California is on fire. And I'm pretty sure that... Yeah, I mean, I know that, but I'm like, is there a place in California called Siberia? Uh, let's see, time. Let's just remove the timing stuff. Time and get current. Time. Closed. Closed. So there is some local echoing there. I might actually remove the local echoing next. Because I don't got time for that. And we're not going to set the modes here for binary, although I will leave that there just in case I need to remember that for the bot part. Um, remove the connected stuff. Um, what else? End of input file, cached key. So if the remote's closed, then we're going to read it. That's the actual interesting part of the code there. Um, STD enclosed, am I using that? Do I care about that? Um, I don't actually think so. Where, where did that go? Where did that, okay, yeah, so it's here. We'll just set that to, we'll just delete that. Alt S, Alt H, Alt X, what's Alt E? That makes a sound? No thanks. Is key cached? Why would the key be cached? Do I need key caching? If we are re being redirected from a file through the keyway, key way, if we are reading the from the computer, save the key. Um, so, yeah, okay. Let's just find that. Um, Let's remove that and uh, file. So 
So this is going to always be true, I think. What is going in here? Okay. So if the right buffer size... Oh my god, math. Okay. So if the number of bytes read... Oh my god, okay. Math stuff. All I'm going to do is remove this and I can look at this later. That's, I, I don't think that's actually the amount of parentheses that I need. One, two, yeah, that should be fine. Um, let's see. Remote side, close on remote close. So we always want to close on remote close. So let's remove that. All right, is key cached. And the outgoing packets convert it. Flush remaining socket buffers. Shut down. Um, okay, so we're actually getting to a pretty understandable code base at the moment. Um, understandable in that it has, what's this? Okay, so I missed that. Understandable in that if S did close. All right, so that's always gonna be true. Um, that I could probably read through this and actually um, create, or rather understand the ABI enough to actually make a bot. But the benefit of doing it this way is that I'm just, I know it works. Like I can see that right there. And that's good. So let's see. Old X, you still working? I'm not sure why it doesn't immediately register old X. Hmm. Let's see. Old X. Is that working? Did I break the old X? Oh no. Please, no. Oh dear. Alright. That is a problem. Not gonna lie. Oh. Closing link registration timeout. So why is... Did I mess up the old X? If E key equals 5. Um, if... E, is key cached one is key cached zero I don't know why that's not working but let's just head back over here and we're gonna just change that print F here to be that it could be some handling that I don't quite understand um, with some code that I removed Let's just try that. Yeah, local side close. So, evidently, um, I removed the handling for when the local side gets closed. And that's fine. That'll be done elsewhere with the IRC bot. Oh my god, it's so hot. Hmm, the local side closing doesn't actually close the stream, it seems. And that's worrying. Okay, so I'll have to actually... I'll figure that out later. I mean, I really should just be programming this from an API at this point.
but let's just see if we can figure out what I messed up here. Um, let's see, Alt X, my socket shut down, so then that should finish there. And we're at the while loop, remote closed. So, is that actually closing the socket at all? My socket shut down. So let's just quickly open up. Um, so I have a bot old. I created a bot old, yeah, okay. So let's find the old X. STD enclosed, all right. So that's what I messed up. But the shutdown doesn't seem to work. I mean, it could be that. No, that is worrying actually. We will only take bytes from the time. So that might be just to wait for some acts or stuff and safely close the stuff. So um, we might add that back. Oh, okay, so the shutdown here and then there's a close. So what we might just do is, do we have a sleep? Um, I'm not sure what the C function for sleep is. Sound delay. So what's delay? That seems like 50 milliseconds, yeah? Not 50 seconds. So we're going to shut down. Um, netcat delaying. I'm going to delay for like a second, I guess. That should be fine. Um... Delaying, closing, and then we're going to break. Uh, hang on. Um, it's going to close after the break, isn't it? If bytes read, if error stock. Okay, let's try that. Oh no, I delayed for a thousand. So what was the delay in 50? Oh, that seems to work. Okay, so that works. I've fixed that, congrats. I'd pat myself on the back, but it's way too hot for that. Check for keyboard input. Is it a special key? Um, otherwise, hang on a second. So. If it's a special key, then it will do some stuff. Otherwise, it'll cache it, and then that goes there. Okay, that makes sense. Then we have the bytes read and freeze. So this is 365 lines of code. So I'm actually going to open it up now in uh, gedit or whatever people use. Um, DOS C, dev, but, um, bot.cpp. And we'll have a look here at the API and try and understand it. So we create a read buffer and a write buffer. And then we get a socket that's reasonable. Um, we get the packet size. We have some flags. Then we do some while stuff for the packet. So we DQ the packets here. I get it. Um, so while we have input packets, we do that. And then after we DQ all the input packets, um, we write some stuff. Um, so that's interesting. Hmm. 
Hmm. I guess for the bot, this would actually be our main loop here. We would read packets and then we would split it into lines. Get rid of the incoming buffer as soon as possible. Should I not be using the actual TCP buffer? It could be using a ring buffer, so definitely not. Um, let's see. And then all this, so we have the shutdown of the sockets. So it converts it to buffer. Then it enqueues the buffer there. Okay, that's actually fairly straightforward. So the last thing we're going to do is just check out how big bot.com is. So how do you, I'll just do a quick du bytes of bot1.com here. Um, how do you open a terminal? So we've shaved off, I would say maybe a kilobyte or two. So if we're going to be conservative and say we have a segment size of 64k, actually no, there's actually um, a map that we can use. I'm being dumb. Okay. So what do we have here? Um, so this is the memory map for the uh, program when it runs. And there's a lot of stuff here, but what I'm interested in is, oh my god, there's so much C stuff now. I think it's because I have debug symbols. Okay. App.object, bot.object. Um, so what I would like to do is use static buffers because then I'll get a warning if we don't have enough space because I believe the stack, yeah, the stack low here and the stack top are here. Um, and then we have, I'm not sure where the heap is. I think it would be somewhere else. It's not here. Current break. Okay, so it might actually be there. I don't remember how it allocates it heap. Um, but one thing I really want to... Okay, end heap beginning is 98E6. Oh, sorry, that's the address of it. I believe the heap is actually just after everything. I might assume that. So let's see, 97B4. I think that's the top of it. Nine, no, I saw a 9A. Does it just tell me the total size at the top? Segment, okay. D group size, D8, DC. A, B, C, D. So there's not really much to work with here. Um, if we look at this and we assume that the free space is the stack, let's open up Python. Um, zero times FF, FF minus that we only have that many bytes. And that seems to be, that's not 10 kilobytes, I've done that wrong. Um, is it? It might be, no, 10 kilobytes sounds about, about it because I had it at eight before and if I got two. So we have about 
I would say 8 kilobytes to actually put the bot. And that seems big enough, since I plan to write the bot in x86 assembly, because I'm insane. Anyway, 8k ought to be enough for anyone, says Cos. Yeah, that's, that's what I believe. Let's check out what's in the trash here. Wow, useless stuff. Um, so I'm just gonna set this to up. They call it Software Boutique. Is that a localization thing? Software Boutique. Um, 1904, yeah, I'll upgrade this to 1910 um, after the stream. But I don't see any real problems to stop me from streaming again um, later this week. Um, so the plan then is to just actually start writing um, the bot's main loop and a trampoline to get into assembly code. And I think that's about it because I got to go now. I got a jet, as they say. Um, so thanks for watching everyone, I'll probably stream later this week, check out all this stuff that I need to update. Is that actually going to update to the next Ubuntu? Or is that just not going to Ubuntu base? Show me, what is this? Changes, description, nothing. I don't know what this is. Is this a distro update? I don't know. Whatever. Just install, please. You can't, your updates can't possibly be worse than Windows 10's updates at this point. Um, I updated Windows 10 yesterday and I actually found the green screen of death. It, uh, I was booting it up, and I hit the green screen of death. Let me see if I can find an image. I'm not sure. Green screen of death, yeah. So I run Windows 10 Insider on my VM because this is the worst article ever. Does this have a picture? Is it because I have ads blocked? Yeah, there we go. Check that out. That's what happened to me the other day. Okay. Thanks for watching. I'm done.